Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. When was the first time you ever set up a home network? How long ago? And if you say last week, then I'm going to throttle you. Because my first home networking experience was uh, a catastrophe. It was in the days of Windows 98. And uh, I went through a hub. And even with two computers sitting in the same room, it was an absolute mess. I thought that I would never, ever want to network computers. It's gotten easier over time, thankfully, not just with the advent of wireless networks, but uh, certainly with uh, routers and switches instead of just plain old hubs. DHCP has helped a lot. Um, you know, of course, newer operating systems have helped to a great degree with better networking stacks, better compatibility. Um, even when I had those computers connected to a network, I still used the sneaker net. And, and to a certain degree, I, I use the sneaker net today. Not for everything, but, you know, for a good variety of tasks. And if you've never installed a sneaker net, it's the easiest networking you could ever do. Look it up, sneaker net. I do have a, a top five list that I'm going to scan for you. I'm not going to read everything, but we'll post uh, it to the uh, corresponding blog post at chris.perillo.com. Submitted by Matt Smith, or Matt's Tech, in the chat room. He's got uh, the way to hardwire a home network, some things you got to keep in mind. It starts out with, number one, getting the cable and accessories. It sounds like, well, duh, that's what you want to get, but he dives into... Um, you know, a few more reasons and uh, decisions that you need to make. As far as quantity goes, you could measure exactly where the cable will be run, but an educated guess can be just as effective. However, it might help to overshoot your estimate by about 10% so that you don't have end up missing some cable. As for type, there are two major categories of network cable, at least today, Cat5e and CAT6. The main difference between the two is related to data transmission capabilities. CAT5e is usually capable of approximately 100 megahertz of bandwidth or capable of um, you know 100 megabit speeds, while CAT6 comes in around the 200 megahertz mark. Yes, CAT6 is better. It's certainly built for more communications across uh, the cable. Uh, gigabit speeds, although CAT5e can handle gigabit speeds, it's usually better uh, to use CAT6. Uh, Cat6 is more expensive, but if it's in your price range, check with your, you know, wherever you're buying it from, then by all means, go for it. If not, Cat5e will produce excellent speeds, especially when compared to wireless. Well, most wireless, at least. There are also some accessories that you'll need to purchase. Pick up some low-voltage wall boxes, one for each wall plate. RJ45 jacks, and that's like a little network port, or for the network cable, I should say. And face plates to cover it all up with. You might also want to think about getting some fish tape or glow sticks to make it easier to run the cable down the wall. Number two, cut the holes for the wall jacks. Before you cut anything, be sure to make sure where the studs are in the wall. Now, if you don't happen to have Patrick Swayze, or what? Oh, sorry, that was, he didn't write that. I was studs and. You can do this by either using a stud finder or just by knocking on the wall. If it sounds hollow, there is no stud in that location. If it sounds and feels solid, then don't cut there. You've got a stud. Once you've found an appropriate location to cut into Brad Pitt, hold up the low voltage plate to the wall, trace the outline, and score it lightly. Next, cut along the lines you've scored until the piece of sheetrock falls out. It helps to have a keyhole saw to do this, but a serrated kitchen knife will also do the job. Yeah. This is where I'd expect like one of those, you know, electric or, you know, battery operated saw things. Yeah, that was that was a real technical one, Chris. You can throw in the stud jokes, but you can't even pick up the jargon. Note, it helps to pick up location close to other wall plates such as cable and or power. That way you don't have to worry about drilling a hole in the attic to get the cable out from inside the wall. Number 3, insert the low voltage boxes. If you scored and cut correctly, then the low voltage wall box should fit snug inside the hole. Once it's in, fold up the pieces of metal hanging down to secure the box. 
Number four, run the cable. Take the roll of cable you purchased and use a fish tape or glow stick to fish one end of the cable through the hole and up into the wall. Again, if the wall plate is not close to others, you may need to drill a hole to get the cable up out of the wall. Otherwise, you should just be able to run it through the existing hole. He goes on to explain further directions. Number five, wire the jacks. In the standard cable, there are usually eight wires as described below. White orange, orange. White green, blue, white blue, green, white brown, brown. For RJ45, there are two major wiring schemes that specify where the wires should be placed in the jack T568A and T568B. If you're wiring from computer to computer, it's like a crossover cable, uh, then you'd use A. If you're going from computer to like a hub, switch, router, etc., use B. The B scheme is demonstrated above in, in, in the list above, but most jacks have a label on the side with both schemes listed. And if you've never crimped your own network cable, then you're probably um, like the average person. Uh, number, number six, finish it up. Pop the jack inside the face, face plate's hold and screw the face plate into the low voltage box. Finally, go get some patch cables and connect your components. Uh, some other networking accessories you might want to pick up is a, a, a tester, um, and they, they range in price, networking tester uh, kits, they'll tell you, some of them will tell you what speed, it, it, if it's, first of all, if it's on, uh, second of all, which speed it, it, it's, it's capable of, of running at. Um, at least the connection coming into the box if you're coming in through a centralized uh, point. And that's kind of what I've got at home here now uh, is a home network that was built when the house was built, which is really, really nice. I've never really had to wire my own. I don't know if I could go that far. Um, yeah, it's wor ah, It works. Well, hopefully it, it would not do that. And if it did, you're really you know running into problems. Um, the... Uh, uh, the only thing that I wish had happened when this house was built is that they used Cat 6 cable instead of Cat 5e. Uh, I'm happy to have Cat 5e, but I, I think my home network would have been a, a little, uh, a, a little more compatible with the traffic I'm pushing across it. Were I on Cat 6, uh, I think the quality of cables says a lot. And knowing that I was probably using contractor grade uh, Cat 5e cable, uh, it works. And I don't have any collisions on my network, at least according to my reports, it running in software. Um, so everything must be okay uh, throughout my walls. And uh, anyway, if you guys uh, have got any other home network uh, troubleshooting tips, uh, you know, configuration tips, I know one of our sponsors, um, SolarWinds, has a, a suite of uh, networking software that you can download, a couple, including a couple of free tools. And Jen in the chat room actually works for that company. I don't know if Jen's awake. She might not be. She may be away from her desk. AFK. Anyway, my email address is Chris App. Oh, there she is. Jen M311. She's here. Woo. Uh, anyway, uh, my email address is Chris at com. And you're also welcome. There's, there's a link for the, the website. Uh, you're also welcome to swing by our website where we've got the chat room and people are typically talking tech. Sometimes people are asking questions. Generally, if you send technical questions to me, I'm not able to address them. Um, I'm much more capable of addressing broader questions. Uh, every day people have asked me for my advice and chances are if you're asking for my advice, the people in the chat room already know what my advice is going to be so you can just as easily ask them as you can ask me. So. Welcome to our chat room uh, anytime, day or night. Uh, we're waiting for you, so what are you waiting for? We're at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.